Rivington the third here coming to you live from USC's Galen Center in Los Angeles. Guys, let's take a moment to go behind the scenes and just see what's going into the production of the World Finals. Right now, the Grand Final stage in the process of being built in preparation for the League of Legends Season 2 World Finals. And it's a quite to see because over 80,000 pounds of equipment is being hoisted over this stage to shine down on players and fans of alike as we see them battle it out to call themselves the number one team in League of Legends. Ladies and gentlemen, there is still one more epic matchup between Counter Logic Europe and Team WE. This matchup is going to be before our two epic semi-final matchups that will decide which teams will be battling it out on the world final stage just behind me on Saturday here at the Galen Center. Ladies and gentlemen, the conclusion to the Season 2 Championship Playoffs begin now. What a start, and they are loving it. This is insane. Curing themselves into the world championship. One more shot to go. The next is full. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are joining us, ladies and gentlemen, I am Lee Diamond Smith. And I'm Joshua Jatleesman. So we're here at day four, the day that was never meant to happen. It is the extended world playoffs, and as you can see, the construction is going on behind us right now here in the Galen Center. And wow, we are broadcasting across the globe to all you guys, and hopefully things will happen all to plan today. Uh, the Galen Center, as you can see behind us, it is all under construction right now. This is where the finals will take place. They will be played in just a few short days. It will be October 13th for you guys, if you are unaware. There are still five teams remaining, of course, in this. And, well, you are you're all aware. We do, of course, have the quarterfinals to play out. CLG versus Team WE. And then, of course, the two semifinals. It will be Moscow 5 versus Taipei Assassins following this game. And then the Zubu Frost await the final winner and who are they going to play that's the question of course all teams have decided to uh, get here eventually they've earned the right to battle they had those three hard-earned days and it was definitely a hard-earned game for clg so and team, team we of course don't forget as well by them apparently team we by the way they were up from 5 a.m that day so that was an incredibly long day for those guys it's going to be so tough to see how these teams actually come into it they've decided on the one game the they couldn't quite agree on the necessary mm -hmm. thing, so it ended up defaulting there. One team wanted a new coin flip. CLG didn't want that, so they finally decided on blue side for CLG, one final match. Yeah, just straight up one game. And it, that's a, I mean, in itself, that's a dangerous, dangerous thing to do. Yeah. I mean, I mean <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks, Chad. That's all you're going to leave me with. Um, because, you know, they could come into this uh, with some just solid cheese strats. I mean, we've been, everybody's been talking about the cheese strats. They could just throw just some scary level one fight that just turns in their favor. Either team, of course, I'm not no particular team. Either team could do this. We've seen CLG with level one fights. We've seen Team WE with level one fights. They could just go straight full on cheese and win this game. And even Crepo said it's going to be one game. Time to bring out the cheese. We've yet to yeah. see any of it from CLG. It's strange though because they were very limiting in their practice partners coming up to this, saying we want to save our strategies. Even though it seems to us it's Someone's going to know that you're going to try to play long game and stall. It's all of that. What are they actually hiding? If they're hiding something, if they are, now's the time to bring it out. Yeah, so let's, without further ado, let's get into the game. Let's get on with this. Uh, so, you are going to get to see our mocked up backstage. Obviously, we wanted to do this when we were at LA Live. It did not happen. We had the two games, though. Let's get this third game underway. So, playing as the blue team, it is CLG EU.
So there is Wicked on your screen, looking pretty cool, calm and collected with his sunglasses on. Of course, next to him is Snoopy. Snoopy obviously feeling a little bit cold here. And uh, there is the stun. There, there is. is the stare. It's, he had that one amazing play as Chogath in one of the games that didn't end up finishing over at LA Live. Froggen, you can see these guys, they still have the state of mind. They're taking it they easy. They have the spirit. It's the spirit that could end up carrying them because we went back and re-rewatched some of those games and the early ones, WE was really in control and it wasn't until later in the day that CLG EU really took hold of some of those series games. And even the game that CLG won, WE were 9-1 up in that game. Yellow Pete, of course, he has been having some torrid times against Wei Zhao. And, and there's Krepo, of course. You know, that bottom lane was definitely struggling. We're going to come to that one in a short while. Krepo, of course, always happy to be on camera. You know, that guys, while we saw it, I mean, it was an eight-hour day, they managed to keep their spirits up. They were singing their way to themselves. They looked like that they wanted to finish the day out. Obviously, we all wanted to, wanted to finish the, finish the, day, the out, day out. But they would really seem to have the spirits kept up. Uh, we've obviously seen them. They've been at the Riot offices uh, throughout the week. Both teams, all, all the teams have been there. The remaining teams, they've all been sat practicing. As far as I'm aware, CLG have been practicing with Taipei Assassins, though, which in itself may lend a benefit to either team. I mean, we don't know how the tournament's going to play out yet. That could actually be dangerous if we're, they were to both make it to the final. Uh, but that's a long, long way ahead, Jack. It really is. And CLG, they stopped WE from being able to initiate fights on them in most of it. And so much of that, I think, was from WE having their main practice partners being Invictus Gaming. We just look at the group stage, the way Invictus played. They were all about just diving in, creating fights for them. And as soon as they didn't have that to play against, it seemed like they got lost a little bit. But now WE's had so long, in a sense, three-day break from not being able to start fights. Have they figured out how to start fights? And really, we're going to see pretty soon here. Yeah, so let's check out as the red team, it is going to be Team WE from China. So WE also set and waiting. Their spirits seemed maybe a little shaken near the end of that last time. They thought they had it with the 2-0. FCZF there on the screen. I mean, we, we watched it. We, we watched, obviously, the replay of these things. There's Wei Zhao. Uh, he basically buys all the wards throughout the whole game and nothing else. It's strange. The team really keys off of all three of their big carries. They have Messiah, Xiaomei, and Wei Zhao. And they're just, there's Messiah, of course. He's one of the most popular players on their team. He was matching up really strongly against Froggen in all those games. Really the only person who managed to outfarm him. Here we have Clear Love. His presence in the jungle is going to be so, so key for them because Snoop keys so much of what COG does. And he had some tough times on those Nocturne games, but the earlier matches, when he was on Maokai, he was really able to support his team well. Yeah, and that's Sao Mei. He's been doing a fantastic job in that top lane. You know, him and Wicked, they've been going at it. Uh, if we look back at it, and that Olaf in that first game was very, very strong for him. Actually, technically game 2.5 as well, I guess we could call it. But, uh, or oh, 1.5, I'm not sure, sure what point you want to call it of. But obviously he had Olaf in those two games and looked really strong against Wicked's Malphite. It's strange that they shied away from that Olaf. Now that they've had the time to review the tapes, essentially, of what they went through, they had the advantage from preparation standpoint on CLG, just jumping out early in all those games. And it was just a matter of, once they'd played so many games, once they'd gotten so fatigued, once they'd kind of fallen back on their base play styles, that's when COG seemed to have a bit of an edge. So with this one game set, they could really come out swinging and knock COG EU right out of this. So now that we've met the teams, we want to hear what you guys have to say. Your questions about the World Playoffs, of course, and I'm sure there's plenty of them, will be answered right here on the stream, of course, by our own very own Freakin' Riff. That's going to be coming on later on, obviously, for the semifinals. Hash LOL Worlds, where you want to tweet us your questions. Of course, at League of Legends as well is the uh, Twitter. So be sure to get those in. We're going to have, hopefully, a player joining in Freakin' Riff later on as well. So we should be have a lot to talk about when we get... <laughs> there will be a lot to talk about after this game finally concludes. But we want to get this game underway. So hopefully things will start off. And we are, ladies and gentlemen, into Champion Select. And there's no surprises, as we've seen in all of the previous games. Twisted Fate, Anivia Band, the Blitzcrank Band also coming out. This is just standard. They don't want to give Wicked Aurelia... Oriana ban as well. This is actually the same bans we've seen almost throughout the whole weekend. These are the power picks from both sides. We did see CLG 
picking Orianna actually in one of the games, mm -hmm. but since they banned it out, they're no longer going to be able to pick that away. And all of those were target bans, oh, meeting Jace. the potential of this first pick, Jace. So Jace getting picked up. You know, of course, the the last match we saw um, where CLG uh, were 45, 55 minutes into it, pushing WE's base, they had done that dilemma in the picks and bans where they left Aurelia and Orianna open and basically said, we're going to give you one of them because we're going to get another. Uh, and obviously, it's looking like Jace is going to be picked up. How would you pick against Jace? This leaves Maokai open, actually, and they banned out Shogath, so there it is, because they don't want to let Snoopy have that. The great thing about this, though, is Alistair is on the table, so they can take away the Maokai, and Snoopy might just default right back to the Alistair. It's been a while, actually, for him, because it's always banned out in pretty much every game in Korea in the past forever. And they picked the Maokai and the Corki. That's the interesting part, because Ezreal is also available, and the fact that Wei Zhao didn't go for Ezreal is a little strange. We saw he didn't have the best win rate throughout the tournament. Maybe teams are shying away from it a little bit because he was very dominant in Ezreal in all of those games, especially early. Maybe they just don't respect necessarily Yellow Pete's ability on Ezreal and decide they're just going to try to bully him up with Corky. Yeah, and of course these teams have had that extra few days to practice. They've all been uh, working hard, so they've obviously had plenty of time to practice exactly what the picks and bans they wanted, what they want to take away from this one. Skana possibly coming out from the jungle. Like you mentioned, Alistair is available. It's a little unusual that Snoopy is not going for it. Clearly, they must have a tactic in play that they feel it would work well for. And they could potentially even think that it's a bit of an Alistair bait. We saw when SK got a hold of jungle Alistair, RNA, they just picked the Singed against it, and it was really just super tanky guys who weren't necessarily vulnerable to the Alistair ganks and they just let that go aside. The Skarner has been very successful in most of these things, and it's a matter of CLG picking their fights. Skarner does an excellent job of that, just with his Impale pulling people in. Yeah, and Cogmore coming out. Does that mean there's going to be a new new support in that bottom lane? That seems to be working very well, certainly with the Cogmore. It's been one of the standard lanes. I'm trying to think whether CLG picked it. I mean, we had that many games. I'm trying to think which one they actually used the AD carries on. But of course, you know, we highlighted before the Yellow Pete versus the Wei Zhao. And it's going to be tricky for them here because they have been losing the lane on things that are generally strong there. This is a comfort pick for CLG EU with the Kog'Ma. They're just trying to get to late game in all these ways. And we can see already across the board, they knew they had success WE did on the Olaf. They brought him back for Chow Mei in that top lane. The Leona, the Maokai, all this stuff is telling me that they're trying very hard to start fights. They knew they weren't doing a good job of it in the last games. And they're trying to make sure that they can initiate. It's so hard against CLG with the disengage from the Jace Acceleration Gate, and if they get something like Karthus here, we saw the double wall in that the game that COG came back from 9 when they just couldn't get in on them. But with the Leona ult, with the Maokai, I think they're going to be able to engage almost regardless of the situation. Yeah, I mean, they've got the potential to go Karthus here, of course. So you can have that wall of pain, the Acceleration Gate, you can just speed away. Obviously, with the Shirelias, I think it was they were using as well. That's how they were just disengaging from the fight very quickly. And you heard when we did the player audio clips, you know, Snoopy shouting out, disengage, disengage. Even before they even started the fight, there is the Nunu. Nunu almost certainly going to come in alongside that Cogmore. And will it be a Karthus picked up for... Well, of course it will be. It's almost like we know these teams. It's the double wall once again. So much move speed coming up from CLG. And the Vladimir, immediately, they wanted that pick. They, it's weird because... I was expecting potentially something like Rise just to get more roots and get more team fights starting. They think they have enough of it with Leona and the Maokai. There is a lot of strong disengage coming out from CLG EU. With all of that, though, this is a much stronger initiating team that WE has had in the games where they couldn't start fights. And a composition, even though we haven't seen exactly with CLG against WE for CLG EU, it's something that they're all very comfortable with once again. And they can all dive at the same time. They've got dive buddies, that's the main thing. Leona could go in, Maokai could follow, Olaf Axis, he could be running in there with Ragnarok going, Vladimir Ultima across the whole team. They've got the entire team just going to close and engage at once. But I guess you could say the same for CLG. They want to pick someone off. They've got that Skarner, they're going to hook onto them, drag them back, and immediately you've got the Absolute Zero if they do close in. Of course, you've got the Acceleration Gate, the Wall of Pain. There's a lot of utility in both these teams. Jack, which sort of team would you favor from them two competitions? If they actually decide to team fight, I actually like CLG EU's composition. If the fights just crash on into them, it's very hard to engage onto a Nunu and onto a Karthus. So if they fully dive in, they would have enough to kind of repel WE back, which does favor them. It's all a matter of will WE pull ahead early and how well is Clear Love going to support with that Maokai. When he's been on the carry junglers like Nocturne, it hasn't been that successful because everything on WE revolves around Chow Mei, Messiah, 
and Wei Zhao because it's really just all three of those getting farmed and then FCZF and Clear Love support them. That three carry, two support setup for them works very, very well. Sorry, sorry, my eyes widen now. I thought it's no spotted, no smite, but then I suddenly found it. But uh, there's no teleport, interestingly, from this game. We are seeing a cleanse, of course, on Cogmore. Kind of expected. It's one of those champions. Hasn't really got a great escape, so it's going to get in there. But we are, ladies and gentlemen, finally into the game. Will it ever end? Here it we comes. will certainly find out. It is going to be CLG EU. They are going to be playing as the blue side and Team WE as the red side. Let's get this one underway, Jack. And here we have both teams just running out. There was the one clash we saw in there. I'm almost going to call it an epic five-game set that we had over at LA Live. There was just the one time they actually fought at level one. They've now had three days to prepare. Do they come out with anything special here at very early stages? of this game. There's a defensive formation coming from WE. They put the Maokai saplings off. That did pop. They have the early ward up there. Both of them have the spot. So WE with the pings down, they've seen what COG EU is doing. But since there were only two members there, they're not thinking that they're going to be too aggressive. So a lot of just back and forth, not much. Krepa warding over that wall. So they have double wards coming out early. Really just defensive play from both teams. Maybe late invade here by WE. Yeah, Snoopy is just getting forced backwards. But we do see Grippo putting that ward over, and then if anyone's watched the video with Skara, that was the uh, reverse position of where he failed three times to try and put that one down. Perhaps not remind him of that one later on. And there is actually a compilation put together by a fan of that epic 58-minute game. 80 wards were killed by oh, COG yeah. EU when the fans were going crazy. So will WE ward that heavily, and will they try to take wards away from FCZF? Because for the most part, come mid to late game, everything will be warded by Leona. He doesn't necessarily build items. He'll go double GP10. He'll never really get an Aegis. He never really gets a Zeke's. He just wards for everyone else and allows other people to complete items. That's their style. That's very much different than COG EU, who's now walking over ward, invading the blue buff at about 1 minute 50 seconds. They're trying to stop Olaf from taking that level 1 blue that he took over the weekend. Will WE try to harass this? Well, Messiah's well aware that they are in that position. He knows the blue buff. Here comes Salme with that axe straight across. They're going to try and force them back. There's going to be a two-man invade. Oh, there's also an invade in the top side, so Wicked's having problems up there. He's going to try and steal it away, trying to prevent them from doing it. It'll be an epic steal if he gets it. Meanwhile, let's have a look at the other side. The blue buff has been picked up by Snoopy, so he's managed to get in and smite it, as well as clear up. So both junglers doing a successful invade there, and with the help of the teams. And we also see, and of course, the lane swap straight away, Jack. And they're really just mirroring each other because both Snoopy and Clear Love just went right back into their rates through the ward so everyone knows where everyone else is and no one's actually gained an advantage yet. The 2-1 lane swap is exactly what they planned last time. Chao Mei had that solo 1v2 lane. He did an extremely good job laning up against it. Wicked is also an amazingly good 1v2 laner, but this could just be WE trying to get things happening. The Yona lane is much more aggressive than the Nunu Cog, and they could potentially get more pressure early with this swap. So Wicked's going to have his work cut out. Let's have a look at this mid lane though. Froggen versus Messiah, very much even throughout all the games in terms of farm. And what happened the last time these guys did this matchup, it was Froggen getting a very early lead early, and then Messiah actually overtook him. Messiah seems to be a slightly better farmer than Froggen. Hate to say it for the Froggen fans, because in these games, he has been out farming, and up top lane, there is a lot of harass going down into Wicked. He's going to have to burn through all of those health pots almost immediately. If there's going to be a lane that creates action right away, it's going to be that top lane with a Maokai dive or maybe just a straight up tower push because that seems to be what WE is keying off of early. Yeah, just 6 and 5 CS in those very, very difficult 2v1 lanes. We are well aware how hard they are, but you can see Olaf still got those two health pots. Meanwhile, Jace and oh, Wicked has already burnt through a lot of them. So they're going to push the tower, but the problem is Wicked's had no damage done to his tower at the moment. If we can look down the bottom tower, I'm pretty sure we can see Yellow Peach is starting to burn it down. He's going to have a lot more damage going down onto that turret as soon as he can put it down there. You can see Sao Mei. Sao Mei is trying to cause as many problems as he can. Would you believe it? <laughs> we have a pause already. Well, and we're in the dark as oh, requested. Wow. Yeah. Well, we didn't like the lights on us during we, the game. We didn't like the lights on us during the game, and now we're in the dark. And you can still see, though, you know, there is, which proves we are live. The construction going on behind us, um, these things happen. And as the moment the pause comes in, I can only imagine the players have asked for something in there. But, Jan, I mean, how do you how do you assess the situation straight away? Very early on, it's actually just a bunch of trading back and forth. They're just splitting up objectives. We saw the blue steals, and then both the junglers really just finishing off. There's the lights. And 
I still think Wicked's in trouble. He burned through all those health pots. I think Chao Mei is going to be able to keep his tower successfully mm -hmm. saved. The Axe spam, the Undertow, with him being pushed up against his tower, clears the way very quickly. I don't think the Nunu Cog can get very aggressive on him until maybe level 7 or 8. And that's just a matter of them. And we're actually back into the game. The pause is done. That was a quick, just small audio issue that they solved already. Not the two-hour delay we had yeah. earlier. And here we are, back into the game. Let's see what happens. Just a Team Comms issue. So we are back live once again. As you can see, straight back into the game. Four minutes gone. And really, the difference being Team WE slightly farming better. Snoopy is going to come up, but he's going to walk straight across that ward. He's going to get spotted. In fact, I think he's already probably been told by Wicked. Don't bother. There is a ward there, so we're going to keep a close eye on the farm between these lanes because Wei Zhao has been farming out quite successfully more than Wicked, and you can see he's already got that 7 CS difference. And going down, everyone on WE, in the games they won, and even some of the games they lost, they were out farming CLG EU early, and they have to win the early game because when oh they dear. don't, we know CLG is going to be able to just hold the fight off, and here could be that three-man gank that we thought might come early. This could be action. Wicked, low health does have flash and heal, so they have to get an ignite down on him early if they're going to try to do this dive. But they could very well, the creeps are not quite lining up. This is going to be a monstrous wave when it does hit the tower, and Wicked doesn't really see this coming. Clear Love trying to throw down some scouts, making sure that CLG doesn't know this coming, and they don't. They're slowly pushing this wave into the tower. Wicked going to be in a lot of trouble. They're going to try to start this off with the Leona dive. She's going to get her armor aura up, try to take the first hit. If they do that right, they're going to get a kill. So here they go, Leona comes around, Clear Love shows himself, they're going to twist it in mass. he's going to drop without any choice whatsoever. He's still not gone down, finally he does go down there. And you can see FCZF taking a lot of damage, but it certainly was not enough. And a very, very successful gank from Team WE. So well executed, the Leona, they got the ignite down, they made it so his heal didn't matter, CLG was not on the case. First blood, and they're going to get some tower damage out of this. Also, Snoopy's map presence is gone, so... They know exactly where he is. They do not have to worry about ganks. That's a very strong early move. And they might try to dive Snoopy too. Same tactic. The two, the exact same thing. And Snoopy's surely going to go down. He's going to try and catch up to MCZF. And he flashes out of the tower damage. Beautifully executed by Team WA. No! It's going to be Froggen with the ultimate. He will pick up that kill off the back of that one. But he does mean he's burnt that ultimate. But it's a saving grace there. It also gives the assist, of course, to Snoopy. Really clutch hitting six, barely at the right time before he could pop off that Requiem. And that is something WE didn't quite account for. They would have been able to trade Tower Egg or slightly better if they'd realized he'd hit level six. That's a potential miscommunication, but that's still a good thing for them. Getting the kill onto Snoopy will... Actually, that didn't set him back much. It allowed him to complete that Philosopher's Stone. That was a good thing for CLG, actually, that they traded that kill with the Snoopy dive. Yeah, they had to get that final kill, and like you say, it does give Snoopy a little bit of Philosopher's Stone. Meanwhile, the two ADs, very much even in gold, but of course that 101 gives Wei Zhao a huge advantage. He's already gone back to base. You can see 2,200 gold to 1,750. Big difference, and he's already picked up the phase there off the back of that one, as well as the Dawn's Blade. This is going to be a very painful lane for Wicked. They're going to have to provide him a lot of support. You can see Snoopy already on the left side of his jungle. They need to be aware of what could happen to him here. They have the ward up in the top river. They could continue to dive here with Clear Love, and they're putting deep wards and trying to catch off Snoopy. They do see him in the jungle, so they might know what's coming. Wicked, much, much caution here. They're going for another blue steal. Yeah, the blue steal, perfectly timed by Team W. Remember, they picked it up on the first time, and their blue, however, because Snoopy is in that jungle, is very much safe. You see Olaf is back to way there. Snoopy's going to get caught out. Twisted advance, that's going to be the Vladimir ultimate. Snoopy will drop off the back of this one. He's just about surviving. Finally, they see the ultimate poking off them from Messiah. He gets the kill, and they are going to back away from this one. Completely safe. There is no Carthus ultimate available, of course, because he just used it. And now, Team WE in a very strong position in this just one game playoff. They've really came out strong, and if it's about starting fights, they've done it with tower dives and with invading the blue, and they might just go for Wicked once again here. He does hit the level 6, so he does have a lot of help, but there's no one here to help him. If they can get the wave to the tower, which is Wicked, is trying his best to make sure they don't, spamming the wave back, he would be dead. They're going to camp this and wait until they get in on here. Wicked might see this coming, and there we have a dive on the top lane, killing it, Chao Mei. Chao Mei's going to go down on the back of this one. He will do. Yes, he will. And that's going to be, though, clear love. You can see Wicked in all kinds of danger at this top lane. Here's the minion wave. They're going to come around. There's the Leona stun. He knew he was coming, but he's going to get dropped again. He's trying to take FCZF. One more tower here. He will Hello. get it. That was a great turnaround. They are going to lose the bottom tower from the, uh, the, sorry, the top tower on the back of that, but 
8 minutes 30, that was a good, good save there from Wicked. He really needed that. The fact that they committed three people there and only got the kill trade as well as giving up the dragon. Three members top CLG EU counters with three members bottom. They didn't even need a jungler gank to kill Chow Mei, so that was actually Wicked essentially outplaying his lane opponent even though they are in completely different places and granting his team this dragon, which might put them right back close on the gold pole. Yeah, very tight game here, very tense between the two teams. That's going to be the gold total. Just going to be catching 11.7 to 12.42. Still so slide advantages to Team WWE. Definitely in a, in a stronger position. The blue buff, of course, still not been picked up by Team WWE or CLG EU. I wasn't sure whether they were going to maybe engage off the back of that, but we're now seeing the AD and the support now heading south. There's the blue buff. Team WE going to secure this one. This is something WE has kind of been known for. Now that they've taken the top turret, they'll go immediately and try to take the bottom one. They're trying to get the global gold advantages, and CLG EU getting that dragon actually hurts this quite a bit. You can see they're going down and checking it. They were planning on taking it right then. Sorry, guys, it's gone. Now it's on for them to push this next tower. They might even try some four or five men dives here just to make sure to get the towers down. Wicked is all by himself. He's been shut down a fair bit in that lane. He's trying to catch his farm back up. This is a window WE needs to take advantage to because they have to fast push these towers down. Otherwise, Wicked's going to free farm and catch back up. Yeah, Wicked already 10 CS against his counterpart, Olaf. Of course, meanwhile down that bottom lane. CF, ZZF, and we out, pushing onto the lane. Yellow Pete. He's fell 10 CS behind. That's not the end of the world, though, as a Cogmore versus a Corky. That's really right on pace with the new new Blood Bowl. He's actually doing much more damage than Wei Zhao. Snoopy with the Oracles already, only with the Philosopher's Stone, so he's got to be very careful with that. Clearing out the wards, trying to make it unsafe for WE to do that fast pushing. This is actually somewhat of a tricky situation. We did see some very good early plays by WE, but the counters by CLG have kept them in this, and now WE might be a little bit lost. Can they push the towers without vision? Right now, they might not want to take that risk. So Fast Willie the Ancients looks like he's being pushed out by Messiah. And Messiah again still out farming. Froggen in that mid lane. Has just gone back to bite and he can still see. Got that 5 CS advantage and the kill advantage, of course. I tell a lie, that's not a kill advantage. He used his ulti, did he? Dirty, dirty tactic. You can use a skill as picking off them kills from anywhere on the map. But you can just see he's farming up massively. 3,600 gold, pretty much even between the two. So not too bad, just a 100 gold difference. And Really, the difference seems to be that top lane. But, as it stands at the moment, we are seeing Wicked in the top. He's covering off the fact that Frog has gone back. Clear Love is with the double buff. He's picked up the Oracle as well, I believe. I just caught a glimpse off from there as we pan past. Really, the advantage stands still with Team WE. And that's actually a safe Oracle for Clear Love because he picked up the Heart of Gold and Philosopher's Stone before he completed it. So even if he loses it, he will have some gold and farm when the game gets going. With this, though, you can see... They have a lot of GP10 items double on Olaf, so Chowmei, if they just keep farming off, he's going to get a little stronger than Wicked because of all that gold generation he's creating. And they've just kind of went into a shoving top lane, free farm back and forth, bottom lane Snoopy's just camping, waiting for wards, and they are a little bit stalled out here. WE wanted to take the dragon and then snowball that into more towers, but because CLG took that dragon, WE is a little bit lost. Their mid-game plan is off. They now have... Oracle spotting out, they're going to do a dive behind, but the good deep warding by CLG is repelling their attack slightly, and really it's a matter of Froggen having to play very, very safe, and all these invades are getting just pushed aside a bit by WE, because they haven't been able to create much action aside from those early tower dives. Of course, we know they have to try and prevent that. Stone and they're diving on towards Yellow Peach. Yellow Peach is going to go down to the bottom lane. Has not got any ignites on him though, so he's going to turn safe from this one. No! It's going to be FCZF turns it back around. Very nice play. The Garthens Ultimate will pick up the kill though. And that is going to be Zui Zhao just about escaping as well. And honestly, I thought he got away with it, but really nice play from FZZF. Really aggressive, and it caught them out. Now they're going for a blue steal, but there are two members here. WE is not going to be able to get this one. Yeah, Wicked this time wants to get in there. Of course, the smite not available for Snoopy, though, so they're going to have to fight for it. They do have Karthus coming around. He's the one who want to pick this up, so they don't want to take it away from him too heavily. Salme at the top, just farming out freely, and there is Frog, and he's going to get that nice and easy. But all these wards that have been cleared up by Snoopy with the Oracles is just stopping WE from being full-on aggressive. They did have that 2v2 engagement that again got turned around by Froggen, so that's something they really have to keep track of when this goes on, as Froggen is actually getting pretty big off the back of this. He's getting out minion killed by Messiah, but the fact that he's picked up two kills with his Rec Cream makes it really hard for WE to dive on. Their main strategy in team fights is to go in with Leona, Maokai, and Olaf, and if they're walking through a hugely fed Karthus Defile, it's going to be trouble for them in the late-game team fights. 
We are seeing the 600 gold advantage being built up by Wee Zhao versus Yellow Peter Cross just dying down that bottom. 2 0 2. Wee Zhao again. Very, very strong throughout this entire tournament. Has been fantastic. And honestly, gold slightly in Froggen's favour actually because he's picked up those two kills and is being slightly out CS'd in that mid lane. Now, I mean, late team comps, how, how are we looking between these two? Obviously, we can see Team WWE trying to push the pace a lot more this time. But COG, they're going to want to stall the game out like they always do. And there'll be a point here. Xiaomei is going to be able to dive through everything, get on Yellow Pete, and try to kill him. The instant that Yellow Pete can solo Olaf is when COG wins the game. Because other than that, they won't have enough to touch onto Yellow Pete and clear him out. So it's a race against time for WWE. And just stepping back a bit... With the way WE lanes in this game and all the others, it's very clear that they have some of the best individual players in the world because COG has them as they might see a dive here. They really want to do something. Here they come! They're diving on towards the yellow peak down the bottom. That's going to be the ultimate for FCZF. He gets dropped in seconds there. They love diving on towards him. Crepo's also in danger. FCZF can try and pick this one up. We Zhao picks up the kill. And that was a double on that bottom lane. Very nice play from Team WE. They really are collapsing and pushing the pace on CLG. That's just the like second they tower. To. They found a way to create this. They've started their things and it's up until 20 minutes they've been killer this entire tournament after that point they seem to get a little lost they know that they have now taken down the second tower look for the mid to go down next they're going to try to dive frog in. they have very good coordination fczf is diving in fearlessly the dragon is up xiaomei is up in the top lane trying to farm out but yellow pete is as well so this dragon could have a lot of poke back and forth we doesn't realize kogma and nuni aren't running back there and we could see a bit of a dragon concede or a poke back and forth here he's gonna on that dragon point at the moment Wicked down that bottom lane, farming off Freeney. Yellow Peach trying to pick up some free farm. That bottom tower, they might just exchange the bottom tower, you know, for the dragon. I'm going to try and keep my eye on Wicked. The pings have gone down on Wicked. Frogan also taking a bit of damage. Wicked's going to get closed in on down that bottom lane. You can see Wee Zhao going for it. Clear Love is there as well. The acceleration gets used by Wicked. He's going to walk through a ward, which means Twisted Advance can get on him, but immediately knocks Clear Love back. He's going to try and turn the damage around. He's got Skarner coming in now. Snoopy is there. Snoopy's hooked in. There's going to be the ultimate for Frogan coming out. Wee Zhao's the target. If they can take Wee Zhao, that has shut him down very nicely. He had a 3 0 2 on the back of that one. So that has really picked up the gold nicely for CLG. And that's definitely put them back in the game. The timing on these Frogonauts has been perfect. It's on such a long cooldown, 173 seconds right now. But every time they need it, it seems to be up. WE needs to create action in a much faster pace off the back of this one because. Those ultimates keep turning it around and keeping CLG in the game. And now that they have the Oracles, five-man dragon, the timing of this is just so clutch for CLG EU. And WE, they are good at creating the action. It's just they have to do it faster because with the turnarounds, they're putting themselves in a hole. And all the plays they've made have been equally countered by CLG EU. And it's only a 1,000 gold game now with the second dragon of the game going to CLG. So CLG pushing that bottom turret. They're going to try and get on it before we shout gets back down there. You can see they're desperately trying to push the, push the pace, but unfortunately the minion's not really with him. We're watching Froggen right now. He's going to have Clear Love coming around the side there. He's got that Oracle. He's got to be very careful. He's completely spotted out. Messiah and Xiaomei on that turret as well. Clear Love just waiting. They're going to try and force the minion wave here. Snoopy luckily might save his bacon. Yeah, Snoopy's appearance there, I think completely oblivious to the situation, definitely caused that going to back off. Snoopy has a tendency to always be in the right place though. They just realized Froggen was potentially vulnerable because they know that the other two outer turrets have been taken They're down. Going for the target is going to be the third one. And here's Snoopy. He's going to have to flash over the wall for the safety. But they have a sense of what's important right now. They know the middle turret needs to be defended. Otherwise, WE would be able to push out. And now with four man stacked down on this bottom lane and the turret already being in a third health, WE is not going to be able to hold down this one. And they know exactly where FCZF as well. They've pinged on top of not stood on yes he, now he did just put a ward straight there they know exactly where he is and that is the first turret of the game for CLG EU and the goal still very even between them just a 500 lead for team WE and actually you know after such a I wouldn't say a disastrous lane phase but they've definitely dragged themselves back into it that play down the bottom from Wicked definitely baited them in nicely everything's been about them turning around WE's aggression all those tower dives which have been successful there's been an equal number that got turned around by Froggen's Requiem and even in the mid lane, the fact that they are outlaning everyone, it's been turned around by the dragons. Olaf and Wicked are very dead even on minion kills. Vladimir versus Karthus, he's only got the 13 advantage. Wei Zhao, even though he has the 3 kills, just the 20 minion kills, and the fact that Kog'Maw has the blood boil to buff him up from Nunu. All this is actually boding well for CLG right now. 
they're going to be fine keeping this pacing of the game because I think they think they have it late. Okay, so if we're talking late game, we're going to start talking team fights. The team compositions of these two, how would you put it in a flat out 5v5? Wow, the damage coming out towards Messiah there. That was a death fire. Grasp used up, but Frogger was baiting it in. Flash is out of there. Clearlock coming in. He is still on the base turret, so he's going to be taking the damage. Absolutely zero on Clearlock. Clearlock goes down. Frogger drops as well. FCZF is going to drop on the back of this one. Messiah also going to be targeting the Akaf. This ultimate's going to come out. You can see now Snoopy coming from the side. Going straight for Messiah. Hooks onto Messiah. There comes Wicked from the bushes. Get it onto him. And that's going to be Crepo going down. Oh, sorry, Wicked going down as well. Wicked diving on them. Chow Mei. Going to get back away from this one. Very, very tight fight. Three for three. Wicked thought he could maybe pick something off, off the back of that. But Sao Mei managing to survive. And Wei Zhao with a really clutch Valkyrie. More action in that fight than we saw through the entire set of the WECLG EU game at LA Live. WE is coming to fight and CLG is all about trying to counteract that again a fearless initiation by FCZF. You see he's died four times but he's been part of eight of ten of their kills. Same for Clear Love. They are just pushing down and now this mid tower is in trouble. Wicked does not potentially have the mana to save this but he can repel them back with those auto attacks from his Brutalize. But that fight just in general again the Requiem was up and since he had the blue buff it's coming back up very shortly again with that Deathfire Grasp. He's making sure he has it so that at the tail end of all these fights, it's turning things around. That has really been the key for them, is Froggen's ultimate. So Froggen now won't have it for around about 60 to 70 seconds. Meanwhile, the damage from Wicked is going to build up. Whereas you can see a Warmox was built by Olaf in there. Going a lot more tanky this time around. Something we've seen Salme doing quite a few times, I believe. He'll go for a whole bunch of health. Last time was a Frozen Melt, and then he'll stack just base resistance items. He'll go Negatron Cloaks and Chain Vests. In this game, he's probably going to end up building one of each, and then just trying to dive straight through through the Froggen and onto Yellow Pete. And if they can do that, they'll be successful in teamfights. This is going to be very, very close. They have an Aegis of the Legion already completed there by Snoopy. Clear Love has yet to reach that, so they do have an aura advantage. CLG EU, that is, if the next teamfight happens fairly shortly. Karth Assault is already back up again, so those windows are becoming non-existent for WEE every time they're going to have to deal with that Requiem. Because of that, they should soon get a bit more magic resist. You see the Abyssal Scepter already coming out on Messiah, and they're going to try to finish off this mid tower here. They're going to get it. Yeah, they've got it. They've realized they forced CLG down one way that bottom lane. They shut them out in the jungle. Just kept the pressure on. So CLG now, 3-1 down in turrets. Team WE definitely with the better lane phase, possibly the better mid game. As we are 21 minutes gone into this game, we will start approaching those end builds. COG, well, we saw 55 minute games before. Are they going to continue pushing the pace on the mid lane tower? I think they will. It's a good Team window WE, for them. They are not in the, ready for this one, and that is going to be a very quick turret. Olaf have been caught out on that top lane. Wee Zhao was down the bottom. COG reacting very quickly. And Wee Zhao has had problems with this in the very same series he does since he outfarms Yellow Pete so well. Finishes off, gets those side lane turrets down, or not turrets, minions down, and here they're trying to chase him out. He's taking the right path though. Good just awareness by COGEU, they're taking out the mid turret. With everything that's happened, the fact this is a 600 gold difference really just goes to show how well COGEU is staying in this game because all those early kills, it really looked like WE might run away with this. Dragon's coming up in 10 seconds, though. They are grouped around it. They're ready to fight if CLG wants this. They're not letting CLG get this, this Dragon, and they will clearly initiate off of it if CLG tries to stop. I think they're going to end up giving it to them, though. Yeah, the Wei Zhao rejoining his team. So they are all there, stacked in. Surely CLG are not going to fall for this one. They're, well they're trying there. to push him in and maybe take a turret. They're going to have to peel off this Dragon immediately, and from that, we could see a very good fight. They should. They're going to pick up the Dragon, and they're going to go straight for it. CLG didn't bathe them away. That's what they wanted. They wanted to force them in towards that inner turret. And I think they realized they were not 100% confident they could win that fight. And this is how CLG EU wants to play. They don't want to take any risks. In the games they lost against WE, it was because they engaged on WE towers. It's because they took the fight to them. They're much more comfortable when the other team brings the fight to them and countering that. They are much more about counter-initiation, about staying safe, than they are about creating their own plays. It is just their style. And this game especially WE 
is taking it to them very strongly, and we're seeing a great clash of styles so far. They are pushing the pace on that top lane. Now, Yellow Pete had gone down that bottom. He'd started clearing the wave, and now he's reacted. He, now he's making his way up. They realize that they are in the jungle. They could have possibly gone for Baron. They could have turned things around. We're at 24 minutes gone. It's not out of the question. And you can see Yellow Pete in that mid lane now. He's farming up as much as humanly possible to try and catch up on Wei Zhao. Still a 40 CS difference between those two. 2 3 3 to 3 1 4. The big goal difference for Wei Zhao currently. They are just continuing pushing the pace, but again, blue buff stolen away. Team WE really taking it to CLG. And they do leave the Baron a little bit exposed. Xiao Mei actually getting a big oh, cutout. He's trying Snoopy's to run away. Up. He might have to burn his ultimate. No, they do decide to go away. And this is going to be that Baron Dance that we've seen so much of in the past. They're going to try to get a whole bunch of wards onto FCZF. You can actually see he's the only one on the team with wards, and this is how they play their mid game. He'll try to stack as many as possible. He could only get three in this instance, and everyone else is just worried about completing their items. Coming down the line, there's a BF Sword now onto Yellow Pete. If he gets onto that Infinity Edge with the new new Blood Boil, that's going to be the point where CLG EU gets really scary in team fights. That point is approaching very quickly, and WE has to act fast. Pepper wouldn't up their tribers. They're going to take the top turret here, CLG. Team WE are nowhere near reacting to this one. And they will have the damage capabilities to take it down pretty quickly. You can see it's a full damage. There's a pings in that mid lane. They're well aware that Yellow Pete was around there. They're going to put the pressure on that mid turret, you know. Team Messiah's there. The rest of the Team WE are pushing down heavily on that mid lane. They're really just going to try to take this turret. They're out of minions, though, so they will have to back out. It looks like CLG is going to be here for the actual turret defense. They're trying to tank out the turret, but they just don't have the health or the armor right now to take it down. They do have the Aegis of the Legion on a clear lift, so they can match CLG EU with the auras. They also have an Abyssal Scepter on Messiah, which will help them. But here again, we see Wei Zhao coming through the bottom. That wave is super pushed. He's going to have to clear that out. And CLG EU now gets to come in around Baron, clear all of FCZF's wards out, and really create... Surprise for them, and will they actually, if that ward wasn't seen in Baron, they would have tried to take it. Well, even with that, they're going for it because they saw so many members of WE out. They saw Olaf as well. Lilov has put that sampling in there, and they immediately react to it. CLG EU trying to sneak a Baron in there. Of course, there's not a massive crowd cheering behind them. As soon as something like that happens, the crowd generally goes wild. They don't have that situation, so maybe a slight advantage for anyone teams that tries to sneak it. We saw it a couple of times. Obviously, they had those two members. I think it was Team WE, wasn't it? They tried to two-man the Baron a couple of times, and you know, it's not so much they can hear it. They can feel it. They can Well, they can see it <laughs> in front of their eyes. The crowd are going mental, and they're like, what's happening here? Now there's just more Oracles coming out. FCZF, they know the ward's there. They might be pretending that they don't see it and hoping to bait CLG EU into a team fight. They need to start creating. It's going to be so hard in these team fights. They're going to be trying to dive onto Yellow Pete, but they're going to have to go through Karthus to file. Froggen's going to try to die in the middle of things just to pump out damage while he's dead. And everything's going to be about trying to get onto Yellow Pete. But do they have enough dive? Leona, Maokai, and Olaf are all going to be flying in. Wei Zhao is going to be having to deal with Wicked, Froggen, Arthas, or sorry, Wicked, Froggen, Skarner, Nunu, all just trying to dive in on top of him. And they don't feel strong enough to actually force a fight around Baron, which is going to be really, really dangerous for WE because they know CLG EU scales up amazingly. Sneaky play there from Wei Zhao. All the rest of the team were positioned, and he just snuck straight round, took that red. Very cheeky. Pushing to get in there, 10-8. 27 minutes, yes, you know, I can see them. They're trying to bait them in here. Two Team WE want to fight this. Lilith was around there. I wasn't sure whether they were going to just pile straight up there. Again, okay, nobody has a Shirelias yet. Nobody can engage quicker. CLG definitely could disengage. They could throw that wall of pain down, as well as the acceleration gate. They could definitely disengage a much quicker. And it looks like they want to engage here. Wicked really wanted to push that one. We talk with CLG EU, and everyone on that team wants to disengage, except for Wicked. He's always the one just getting antsy and ready to go. He has his buttons on his initiation skills. If he's Malphite, it's on Unstoppable Force. If it's Aurelia, it's on Blade Surge. Constantly, he just wants to go. It's about the team talking him out of it. You could really see he was ready to go there. And now WE, just so much poke back and forth. And we have seen this countless times before. This is where WE lost the game at LA Live. This is where CLG EU is at their most comfort, and they see Wicked in the bottom lane just farming out. He's out of mana. He has to go back to base and run all the way back, but WE isn't even capitalizing on this. They're not pushing the tower. They're not forcing Baron. They're really just kind of lulled a bit. They don't really know what to do, and this is the struggle that they had at LA Live. They have to make something happen in these situations, 
and it's going to be tricky. Yeah, it's that usual, like we said, 20 minutes gone into the game. It gets to that situation. CLG just know how to play the late game. This is their, this is their field of expertise, if you will. Team WE trying to try and push it on towards this bottom turret. Are CLG going to try and collapse around the backside? They can see the clear looks there. They might let Cash Clear up out. Instead, Team WE want to engage this one. Messiah's taken very low. Frog is going to get dropped in this one, but they're all stood in there. And no, Frog still has not gone down. There's the ultimate. Now he's going to get dropped. Messiah's going to go down off the back of that. You can see Wee Zhao's also down. Olaf's down. TLG picking up multiple kills off the back of that. You can see Missile also can get dropped in there. Wicked dive straight in. They can take the Baron off the back of this one. Snoopy is still alive, but more importantly, Yellow Pete and Wicked are there to tank it out. That fight was so forced by WE. They initiated through a wall of pain, which made everything lackluster. They're now forcing down the Baron, and this is CLG EU's experience coming in. They know how to team fight. WE has the individual skill because they win the early game and they win the laning, but they just can't seem to get the fights, and CLG EU is masterful. This Baron is tricky for them. They're doing a very good job tanking back and forth. Closest target always getting hit, and there they get the Baron. They've won the team fight. This is mid to late game. How does WE come back for this? Because all of the early game, everything they've tried to create it was just lost in that last team fight. Also ping the blue, the frog wants to get there quickly. Nunu had spawned just in time. Not that that's a massive thing, but Crepo is another man with the Baron on. So, four-man Baron for CLG. 13-12 into this game. Gold advantage for the first time with the CLG. And we're going to check out the replay with the audio from the players. Really fucking awesome job. Okay, let's see, 20 seconds for me. 20, 20 seconds, and they were happy with that. <laughs> I think you can safely say. Uh, it was a pretty awesome job, I believe, is the words that Wicked came out with, and uh, definitely an advantage for CLG EU Dragon. is being taken away by Team WE, though, just above. We're following Snoopy right now, and we can see Team WE are picking up the Dragon. As it is, there we go, and that's definitely going to make the gold. Very even, just 800 gold between them. COG, EU all back in, all want to buy. They've cleared out all the objectives they needed to, and the build starts to come out here. And this is the struggle now for WE because they've tried the forcing, and it's been repelled. You can see they did finally get the Shirelia's Reverie to start fights, but that's not really going to help them because they've been taken to a point where they lose the team fights, they were just shown very clearly that they can't take CLG EU heads up, and that's before they got the Baron buff, that's before they got all that gold. The Infinity had finally been finished by Yellow Peep. The Zeke's Herald coming out onto Crepo. Last Whisper onto Wicked for increased poke. CLG has been known to just stall at this advantage and wait until the one next team fight they win ends the game. But I think they have a big enough edge here and enough poke that they can actually take some of these turrets out. And W is going to be forced to go in on them because in the previous sets, when WE has not acted, when they're behind like this, they know they don't come back because they know CLG doesn't make the mistakes. Whether they try to bleed them out here, or whether WE tries a last ditch effort much earlier than previously, will really decide if this is another 60 minute game or not. Either way, but I think we can all agree that these are very tight teams. They are very close in terms of skill. Team WE definitely have the stronger lane phase. They were 9-1 off even in the game they lost. They seem to outplay CLG in that laning phase, but CLG, you, again, we see flooring back into this one. Looks like CLG may take the turret down. Yes, they will. Wicked, of course, alongside Yellow Pete. They have that double AD damage on that turret. They can shred it down very, very quickly. I think that's the first time as Shirelli's Reverie was just used there by Team WE. They really wanted to escape that, but this is the first time I think we've seen Shirelli's on Team WE. Normally, he just doesn't even have a chance to save for that, putting it all on wards. This time, he's gone for that item. And they have double Shirelia's Reverie as well. Clear Love picking it up, so they are looking to maybe initiate in the right situations, but with the Baron buff and with all the poke coming up from CLG EU here, it's going to be tough for them to hold off that turret. You can see Yellow P only a couple hits on the turret, but CLG is patient. They will get those two hits 50 times, and eventually they'll take the turret down. And they don't actually seem to be pushing off to the top or the bottom. You can see a huge stack up on the top lane. That may take the turret by itself. And the pressure just staying there. They have flash up in a few seconds on Snoopy. If they want to start a fight, it would very well be that flash impale onto someone from Skarner. But knowing CLG, they're probably just going to play it safe and poke. Wei Zhao would almost certainly. Uh, Wei Zhao, sorry. Get his name right. Eventually. You can see they're definitely getting a little bit of poke on there. Yellow Pete is hitting that damn turret. He's slowly but surely working it down. Wicked there. It quite happens to eat a sapling. The top range, the wave has been taken down. 212 CS to 147, that top lane 
Definitely gone in favour of Wicked as we've moved later into that game. I say lane, it's not so much a lane now, but you saw the damage, the shred on towards Salme there. Salme realises they've got to fight something here. That turret is being shredded by Yellow Pete and Wicked here. They're doing a heck of a lot of damage, and they've already taken it down to below half. But here we go, the Baron for CLGEU is out. They know they have a lot of gold to go farm with. They're going to take the blue buff, and there's also the outer turret. They don't need to get the inhibitor turret on the mid there. They got two-thirds of the health. They're going to play it safe like they always do. They want to take the dragon when it comes up. They're going to try to get as many turrets out as possible. They win the team fights. They prove that. They can't dive through Frog, and they can't get through Crepo. They do not have dive to get through Yellow Peak. They just don't have the damage or the team fight capabilities unless they find some sort of a perfect fight. And that's why CLG takes it so slow. They have the Frozen Heart now onto Snoopy. They're really just waiting until WE tries to force something. They might get this turret, but even that is too tough for them because look at the damage that comes out from Froggen just with the DFG and a couple of hits. And Yellow Pete also in there, shredding down his health. And we talked about, you know, the fact that he gets that infinity edge, Phantom Dancer, he can really rip apart. Ah, Sao Mate, Sao Mate has got that Randian Zoman, but honestly, it doesn't seem to be enough now that Yellow Pete has that in fetch. And you can see the waves, the top, the bottom, all starting to stack up here. CLG could rotate at whichever lane they want, but they feel they can take this middle inhibitor turret. Honestly, they could probably tank it up. Snoopy's going to go in. He's going to tank it. They're going to take the inhibitor turret. You can see Yellow Peach just taking it down. Wicked comes in. That is the first inhibitor turret down. That is a huge advantage for CLG. They realize they'd harassed Tiaomei down enough from the outside of the base and could just go up. The Olaf was not a threat. They were very confident in their ability to take down that turret, and it is the double AD that helps them with this. They're slow pushing it here. At some point, WE is either going to have to force a fight that they'll have a low chance of winning, or they're just going to get bled out by CLG. In the past, they've been bled out by them. There will be a last ditch effort at some point, but it's probably going to be after the next Baron. CLG's going to want to try to harass that down. There's a bunch of wards out that they will have to clear before that happens. There's a lot of time before we'll end up seeing that, but for now, the siege is on. The siege is on. I think they go for the exposed inhibitor. Will they just try and force a fight there? You can see they're clearing out the waves. There's a big wave along that top, but no. Snoopy's going to go back, which means the rest of the team will back off and buy some more items, some big, fat, juicy items. And like you say, timing out that Baron. It is June 49 seconds. They're going to be well aware of that more than we will. Uh, they're going to go and purchase some items. Let's see what they're going to pick up here, Jan. So we actually see a Guardian Angel starting to come on Yellow Peak. He hasn't quite been able to finish that. Another Reverie completed. This time for Krepo, so if they do want to try to speed Snoopy up, he's going to be able to jump in and get that. The Ore items have been out for a while. The Zeke's Herald, the Aegis of Legion, and the Frozen Heart all helping. It's just going to be so difficult for them to dive through and get onto Yellow Peak. Not sure what WE's action is here. They might have to try to steal a Baron. They might have to try to pick Snoopy while he's clearing wards in the jungle. Or they might just have to wait for some kind of tower dive. But we know in the past that CLGU doesn't let that happen. They're all about counter-initiation. They're all about leading their opponents out. And this safe style, once they have this kind of lead, we haven't seen a team actually disrupt them from it. No one that seems to be able to drag the game, force the late matches in CLG EU. And honestly, their team fight is generally pretty damn good when they get to this stage. Oh, well, Snoop is in there. He thought about hooking someone in, actually, and forced the flash from FZZF there. So we're not going to see any Leona flash engages. So that's immediately taking one weapon from their arsenal. Meanwhile, Salmei walking through that ward. The rest of CLG, they're going to try and bait this one out. Salmei may come around that corner. Yes, he is. They're going to catch on him. From Salmei getting shredded there by Yellow Pete and forced away very low. Now they could try and force that Baron. They're really going to try this, but there is the risk that Clear Love could flash in and smite it. CLG might be worried about this. If anything, they're going to try to peel this immediately unless they see that he's going to flash in. They get the wards down. They might just rush us down. He's going to try to steal this. It's going to be close. Either way, they're just poking him back with so much damage, he can't even go in. They're going to get it. They're going to get it, and you can see this just through Wei Zhao. Wei Zhao trying to push it off from range. Oh, they nearly got the steal, but the smite comes out from Snoopy there. And actually, off the back, you can see Clear Love went down to Froggen. Froggen again with the clutch. Carthasol taking out Clear Love. That's the jungler down. That's five men with Baron and the exposed inhibitor, and many low members of W. They're, they're going, going to take this inhibitor, and if they get a team fight on the end of it, they will push through, but most likely they're going to take this take the towers, and this is even more control. It doesn't look like WE can even get close to them right now. CLG just going straight for that inhibitor. They didn't even bother with the creep wave. They didn't need it, and they are still going to disengage. They have a huge creep wave going in there. They realize they've got an advantage, but 15 seconds born, they're going to pick up the dragon. They're going to pick up that huge creep wave at the bottom, playing it 100% safe throughout this game. CLG really brought themselves back into this one. Honestly, in the first 20 minutes, I thought WE had this. 
It was like the first 20 minutes of all the games we've seen between WE and CLG, but what comes into play for CLG EU is their team play, their teamwork, their motto, just their emotion. They control everything. WE now trying to just get something here after giving up Baron. They took out a mid turret, but they're going to have to back up right away. And this is actually early for CLG. We're only at 38 minutes, considering the control, considering the fact that they have the inhibitor right now. Next lane for them is bottom. There's an outer turret there. They're going to try to roll through both of those and take it out. And even the tanks for them, Chow Mei, he gets shredded in a couple seconds. There's no way he can run through all of CLG right now to get to Yellow P. There has to be a fairly large error here from CLG EU if they take this game away. They're all sticking together. They have outer turrets up. The risk of backdoor is fairly low. WE actually all grouping up in a triangle brush. They're going to try to get some kind of surprise initiation because this would be their last ditch effort. They're either going to do this or try to backdoor mid. Either way, they, this is their move. This is what they're trying to create. This is going to be interesting. Here they go. You can see them making that move around the side. Are they going to get spotted by that Cogmor ultimate? Oh, the sapling would have got spotted there, surely, by Snoopy. They realize it. They've pinged it. They're going to try and engage them on their CLG. Then let's try and gather in this bush. We want to go for Sinner. DWE cannot. They're going to have to back away. That's not the move they wanted. And again, just caught between two mines. They didn't want to engage a 4-5-5, but they got caught by a Cogmor's wall. And Messiah getting hooked in there. They tried to go for it. Salme trying desperately to close in. Clear up now on the back of this one. They're trying to get in there, but MCTF getting melted. Messiah's going to get dropped there by Yellow Pete. They do take Yellow Pete down. Carthus actually dropped. Sorry, Yellow Pete's still alive. And there goes the Carthus ultimate. And that's going to surely be the end of the game. But you can see the double cover coming out. Frogan picks it up. We Zhao, the one surviving member, has to back away. They have enough to finish this game. They're going to have Super Minion Wave coming up the mid lane. Yellow Peach just quite happily to tank this one. He's got a Creep Wave coming up. He's just going to zone out, zone back in, and surely this is the game. If We Zhao would have been finished by Wicked, I'd say this is the end of the game for sure. But with this, he might be able to fend so hard. Two Guardian Angels here for CLG. Only 15 seconds left on the death timer for Clear Love and FCZF. Instead, CLG EU is going to try to take the circle of inhibitors here. If they can get the third down, even if they just take the turret out here, they know they have the game in complete control. None of their Guardian Angels even got popped in that fight. They are sitting so pretty right now. There's no reason for them to force it through. And that damage from Yellow Pete is the reason they're so close here. They couldn't even touch him when they tried to dive through. And that was a hard dive through that they did in that last fight. Total control right now by CLG EU. Yeah, I incorrectly called it. I thought they dived on towards Yellow Pete. It was Frog, and then they managed to catch out. So they got one of the big carries down. But Yellow Pete now is so fed, so shredded. He's just doing so much damage to them on the back. And Wicked as well is also laying down a lot of damage. He's got that blood thirst, got that last whisper and brutalizer in there. He is doing a lot of the damage as well. This is the triple threat that a lot of teams bring with the Kogma. If you bring Kog, you make sure to bring high damage in your top lane high damage in your mid lane, and then just support tankiness from your support and jungler. Because you just try to split the other team up, you make it so they can't do everything they want. Nothing does really more late game damage from a caster perspective than a frog and sitting in your team with his defile on. Nothing does more from an AD carry perspective than a blood boiled Kog'Maw. On top of that, you have a bloodthirster last whisper brutalizer coming out from Jace, so there's just way too much threat coming around from CLG EU and WE just doesn't have the resources to take it on. How are they going to hold off this last inhibitor? There's two waves of super creeps that are going to be pushing in. CLG doesn't have the Baron buff, but I don't think they care. They're going to go in, take down that third inhibitor. If they don't win the game off of this, they might win it off the next Baron. They do take it slow, so we can't call it yet. Well, they're waiting for Krepa to get up there. Of course, that Blood Boil, a massive part of it for Yellow Pete. As soon as he does get in there, they put the ward down. That's going to get cleared straight out. In dodge the axe out. All right, getting launching damage towards Team WE. See CZF in the front of that. Robin's just hanging off in the background. He knows they're going to likely to engage on him. And still, COG very patient here, despite the fact they've just clearly won a big team fight. 9 4 up in turrets, 18 4 in kills. Massive gold advantage of 8k currently. 42 minutes gone into this game. This could be the fastest game we've seen CLG possibly win here in the. Team WE quarterfinals, the game that never ended but could well be over shortly. Team WE started off so well, there it is, that's going to be the Vladimir ultimate, they're going on towards Wicked, but Messiah already is damaged to Snoopy is going to get dropped on the back, you can see Wicked diving in there, it's actually a good fight for Team WE here, could they get the damage down, Salme tried desperately to get in there, but Yellow beat again, off the side, shredding them down. 
Guardian Angel pop by Messiah. He's going to spawn. They're trying to take Yellow Pete down. They will. They're going to get him down. FCZF drops off the back of the Frog and Ultimate. And there is Yellow Pete. Come back from the Guardian Angels, of course. And CLG come out four on one. Surely the game is now over. Chat, it is going to finally end. The game is over. CLG moves on. They will face Azubu Frost in the next semi final. Look at them right now. They just look relieved, happy, waving out to the crowd of online viewers. They won that game playing their style. They were more aggressive than they were over at LA Live. That bodes well Man. for them. They just Man. kept Same it up. Oh, the late game team now. comps. They got the Karthus. Falling back on a Kog'Maw was a great move for Yellow Peep because he Man, had more of an impact than Wei Zhao in that game for really the first time in the series. Yeah. GG, congrats to COG, EU. You just to really see well you know, played. You know, the pressure must have been so on. intense on them because that lane phase, they were definitely falling behind. There's no doubt about it. But they managed to just hold themselves together. That big play down the bottom by Wicked drew them out and absolutely fantastically just got them back into the game. It was the turnarounds on the tower dives often just triggered by Froggen's Karthus ultimate that was a close one in all seriousness because WE was on the brink of turning that for so, so long. But then really, once they had that one super force team fight through the wall of pain, you knew COG EU had taken control. It's all those races against time you see them play so much. After a certain point, you know they've taken control. And it's just Snoopy staring into their souls after then. They move on. They're confident. They're good to go. He's had time to perfect that, I believe. And he's definitely worked his way into it. So, what a fantastic match. And of course, you know what that means. It means it's going to be a Zubu Frost versus CLG EU. It's the OGN Summer Championships all over again. What a game that was. If you missed it, it went all the way to a five-game epic, to a blind pick epic. And, well, a Zubu Frost came out on top of that one. But, honestly, I just don't know which way to call it right now. They've been so strong in the past. CLG EU and a Zubu Frost, they have so much history. There is a clash there because Zubu Frost is all that aggression. We have a replay of the last push with the player audio to see how pumped up they really were. To bottom hits. Stay back to bottom hits. I can wall, I can wall and we can poke more, but... Wall to disengage. Yep. Go get chunked. Come, Vlad. That's chunked. Run back, run back, run back. Run backwards. Run backwards. Just run backwards. Run backwards. We need Olaf, we need Olaf. Olaf, Olaf. I'm in GA, I'm in GA, I'm in GA. They're gonna kill me again. Help, help, wicked, help, wicked, help, wicked. Flat, flat, flat. I'll sing. Flat, flat has to die, flat has to die. I kill him. Good job. Finish game, finish game. Awesome! Yes! Oh! Is it, guys? Oh, fuck yes. yes. Wow, how calm did they sound through that fight? It just shows. Maybe just how collected they were, but maybe just the difference of the environment we have here. They don't have the vibrations from crowd noise. They don't see the thousand people out in front of them. And it's very much almost more controlled. They have more time to think about it. They didn't seem to be as emotional. Another thing from that could be they would played that game so many times. They've been in ahead. Heads, they yeah. finished it slow. That's how they like to end games. They were so controlled in the end there. And that was just crisp execution from CLG EU. Yeah, they've gone to bed thinking about that match, and finally it played out their way. And Team WE, you know, they don't need to be too down on themselves because, honestly, they performed fantastically. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, it's been an amazing end to the quarterfinals. Finally, it is over. We are going to go over to the semifinals next. Let's take a look at the brackets to see how things stand. And honestly, well, just look at those games. How good are they? COG EU versus Azubu Frost. That will be coming up later on. But first off, it is going to be Taipei Assassins versus M5 BenQ. What a fantastic game that could be coming up. I mean, you've got two ultra, ultra aggressive teams. And that could very well be the highest kill, most aggressive game of this entire tournament. Taipei Assassins won their quarterfinal matches in 26 and 30 minutes, respectively. The IG versus Moscow 5 quarterfinal was just an overall bloodbath. I know the first kill was 26 kills to 24. Yeah. They're going to clash into each other over and over again. And Taipei Assassins are scary strong coming into this against Moscow 5, who really, if you count Hanover, the world champions defending, Every one of these Asian teams, when they ask who they most fear coming into this, a lot of them say, I want to play Moscow 5. TPA is going to have their chance here, and that game is going to be incredible. So, if you were to call it right now, what sort of finals were you thinking for the semifinals? Taipei Assassins versus Moscow 5. 
so, so close to call. Zuberfrost versus CLG. They had a best of five recently. It was pretty popular. It was best of five. It went all five games. We wouldn't have a blind pick here, and we also have the best of three. It's really too close to call in almost both scenarios. We've been talking with some of the pro teams, and they're mixed whether they think Moscow 5 is the favorite or TPA is the favorite. I'm not going to reveal who said who just so they don't get the bad calls, but it's been so close amongst all this. I know COG EU is practicing with Taipei Assassin, so they're going to be really practiced coming into this. If they meet in the finals, it's like, what, should we really pick those scrim opponents? They're going to know each other very well. Really, the rest of this day, when we complete all this, no matter what happens, the finals are going to be awesome. Okay, so coming up, it's going to be Freak and Rivens, and they're going to be bringing you, of course, the Moscow 5 versus Taipei Assassin semi-final. Do not go anywhere. It's going to be fantastic. And, of course, they're going to have two awesome guests. It's going to be Hotshot GG and Dan Din. Do not go anywhere. Oh. Mm -hmm.